Next up on the festive marathon, Matt Smith's final episode, The Time of the Doctor. What I think works particularly well in this episode is that they, since it was the last episode of Matt Smith's tenure as the Doctor, they tried to kind of pull as many kind of loose plot threads that he had had when he was the Doctor and kind of solve them all together in one episode, which I feel is a good place to go. So anyway, the episode, The Time of the Doctor. The Doctor mis discovers a mysterious planet with a message seemingly beam beaming out to the stars, and nobody seems to understand it. Even the... Yes, with hundreds of races who... Of alien creatures who have come to see and hear the message and to try and ponder what exactly it is. Everyone has come to hear it, and nobody knows what it means. However, he soon discovers the kind of truth behind it. <coughs> it's up to the Doctor, his companion Clara Oswald, who is having a panic of her own with trying to feed her family on Christmas, and the Church of the Papal mainframe, led by Tasha Lamb, to try and figure out how to do this and how to get out of it alive, which isn't going to be easy. Now, as I said, the episode is particularly good at tying up kind of loose plot threads from Matt's time as the Doctor. I it kind of poses and kind of answers the questions of what happened or why did the cracks from Series Five come about? What happened to them? Why? Why were they created in the first place? What caused the TARDIS to explode and cause those cracks? It also kind of answers where the silence came from. What they were doing what they were doing before they appeared in series 6. And it also kind of gives us a small hint that we had pre seen in the previous 50th anniversary episode, the, uh, the Day of the Doctor. It also kind of pushes forward the plot line of the Time Lords possibly returning. Which, kind of, for Doctor Who fans in 2013, that was a big deal. To have the Time Lords kind of return, that they had always been absent for most of Doctor Who, and just to have them return, even for just, even if it was just an idea, it was super exciting. I mean, but then that also kind of poses to me a little bit of a, not necessarily a down point, but a little bit of a kind of criticism of the episodes in that it tends to get a little bit overcrowded. I mean, <clears throat> with the other regeneration episodes, it was usually one alien species that was the problem. Or kind of one enemy that the Doctor was facing. For example, with uh, Christopher Eccleston, he was facing off against the Daleks. With David Tennant, he was facing off against the Master and the Time Lords. Whereas, with the Matt Smith's final episode, he encounters several different creatures, including uh, Sontarans, Cybermen, Daleks, a, a whole bunch of them. He encounters a load of different creatures all at once. We don't get to see all of them, but, I don't know, maybe it just feels a little bit overcrowded, just with all these aliens. But then it also does kind of pose some kind of problems with the Doctor. I mean, <coughs> without giving too much away, he finds one place that he feels he now kind of has to stick around to defend them from all the kind of alien creatures that are coming on, and... Yeah, he spends over three hundred years kind of protecting this one little, this one place, and eventually Clara says, "Look, you've been doing it for a long time. Maybe it's time you pass over the reins." But he just says, "No one else can do it. I have to keep doing it." And that's often the curse of the Doctor. <clears throat> I also liked that they, with the regeneration sequence, they acknowledge that this. They acknowledge the previous regenerations. I mean, when they introduced John Hurt, and kind of with the gap there had been between Paul McGann and Christopher Eccleston, it was kind of... Ex I think many people kind of expected them to find some way to skate around the problem. Or say, oh, the Doctor's got more regenerations just because he has. Or think, the Doctor is immortal. But no, they actually... They do have the time to have Matt Smith sit down and say, look, I can 12... Changed 12 times, 13 versions of me, 13 silly doctors. Okay, so you're number 11. Are we forgetting Captain Grumpy? I didn't call myself the doctor during the Time War, but it was still a regeneration. Okay, so you're, n you're number 12. Well, number 10 was regeneration, kept the same face. I had vanity issues at the time. I can't ever do it again. 
I'm just, I'm glad that they acknowledge that, yeah, that he is technically on his last regeneration. And, yeah, it it's kind of hard-hitting stuff to just watch someone who kind of knows that they're about to die and they can't really do anything about it but just make a last stand. And I do think it it's not the most Christmassy episode. I mean... The point of the episode, I don't think, really is Christmas. I mean, yes, he gets stuck in a town called Christmas, but no, Christmas isn't really the focus of the episode. It's more kind of supposed to be Matt Smith's regeneration first. And I do think it does that very well. So, yeah. The Time of the Doctor, as a whole, not my favourite regeneration, but not a terrible episode. Anyway, and I do, I do think it was kind of fitting send-off for Matt Smith. I am glad that they brought back kind of elements from give especially a final farewell to Amy Pond. I, I think that was a nice touch. I mean, yeah, as I said, not the best, but yeah, pretty a pretty good regeneration episode nonetheless. Anyway, next up on to Peter Capaldi's Ten Years of the Doctor, and next up, Last Christmas. Hmm, this should be good. Until then, see ya. <laughs>